Hey, what is up, dudes and dudes? This is Dude Diligence here. I know a long time no see, long time no see. Regular content is going to be out um, briefly, especially today, tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, I have sort of like a semi small midterm that I have to deal with, uh, you know, master's program and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine. For those of you who know that I've been having like, you know, nosebleeds and everything. And uh, apparently, I, there's nothing wrong with my body, it's just me stressed. I mean, I went to the doctors and we did a CT scan, so I don't have cancer. Um, but again, maybe we should start buying you know, hospital stocks because, um, you know, basically the entire day I spent in hospital waiting for results and all this kind of stuff. It's like another, you know, a follow up checkup, but there, apparently there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, so apparently when I'm in the hospital, the stock tends to go down. I'm just kidding. It's just the entire market. So for those of you who don't know, um, so today is October 4th, right? And then in China, there's a thing called October 1st. It's like the national day, right? The national day on October 1st. And then it's usually a seven day holiday. So they usually get off like, you know, get out of the holiday on October 7th. And I don't remember when will this holiday be over. I think it's this Friday. I'm not really sure. I think they have this entire week off um, because they have to work like Saturday and Sunday. I know the Chinese labor market is really weird. Uh, I need to go check up on that for you guys. Uh, when I have a confirmation, I will probably you know talk about it in the next video. So what happens is, is when the Chinese market is stagnant, that means uh, there are less people. Think about it, right? There are 1.3 billion people in China. Let's just say only 10% trades futures. That's how many people? That's bloody 0.13 billion people that's trading options. And if only one dollar would invest in the market. That means it's 0.13 billion dollars every single day. It's just floating in and out of the market. This is why when we when we have a huge Chinese holiday, when you know the Chinese market is halted or the Chinese market stopped trading or closes the market, that means less people trade futures, less people trades, um, you know, options, less future trades, less people trade the regular stocks. And you guys are like, oh, they trade in their their own market, but no, like at least around 20% of them actually trades in the global market. So when they trade in the global market, that means when they're on holiday, it's bad news. That means there's no liquidity, especially in a very uncertain market, especially in a market where you know the congressional um, the Congress is, is arguing, you know, mom Congress, just say Congress is father, is dad, and the Fed has nothing to really use to lower inflation because they only have two ways of doing it. So Fed is mother. Mother has nothing. It doesn't have anything at its disposal until November 9th, right? And then dad is arguing about debt ceiling and all of the other bills because Republicans and Democrats are fighting. The Republicans think Democrats are overspending and Democrats think Republicans are stupid. So basically, this is what's happening right now. And then what are the effects on the market? Greater uncertainty. Bigger volatility swinging to the to the opposite side. What do you mean by opposite side? If you got go, go like a VIX, okay. In the morning, this is what happens. Oh my God! Everything you can basically just day trade. You can day trade VIX now. In the morning, people are like, Oh my God! Everything should be fine, right? And then, um, but what happens is we have news coming out. Oh my God! That is fighting again. Congress is arguing about that ceiling. Oh my the. The, the emergency resolution, you know, um, uh, it's going to expire on December. We're going to run out of money again after December. Oh, my God, Facebook is running into problems. Oh, my God, all the tech companies are running into problems. But, I mean, Tesla's still going up for some reason because Elon is just, you know, the supreme god of stock market. All tech market is, you know, having massive sales. But in reality, it's just a lot of institutional investors are, are bit reaping their profit because their break-even point on SPY is literally around 430 so right now we're, we're we're under that line so they're like oh let's just uh and do some sell-offs and let's see how what happens okay so sell-off happens right and right after sell-off happened what happens vix will spike right vix spikes as expected pew vix go up blah 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 this is how much vix go up by how much let's see so this line and that line 24 22 two dollars a 10 percent vix spike do you know how much money you can make by just buying VIX calls th this morning? Oh, dang it. It's also like in it like a 25 minute span. Too bad I, I don't have liquidity to do a day trade options right now because I, uh, so 
if you guys are on my Patreon, you know that I'm a very sad day. I went to the more, I went to the doctors, and my portfolio actually dropped by ten percent today because uh, I think I over leveraged myself a little bit. It's a learning process. Um, so that's why I made that Patreon video to warn you guys. But for the main channel, I'm just gonna explain what really happens today. So 10%, right? So if you buy the VIX calls today, you will probably make about 50 to 80%. But anyways, this is a hindsight 2020, right? So it goes up and the market's like, oh my God, like SPI probably won't drop under two to a 427. So, uh, so it rebound a little bit, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden we have Citadel Group's fucking CEO coming on and talking about, oh my god, inflation is getting so bad. People are Reddit and Twitter talking about, oh my god. Eventually they realize maybe inflation is not transitory. Bang goes up again, right? And then you just have this the entire spiral. People cannot, like, really, we cannot agree whether the market is gonna go up or, or down tomorrow, right? And usually when it's a stable market, usually SPY will rebound by now, but it doesn't. So it's a dilemma right now. It's, it's pretty sad that, um, our VIX at 22, and if, we, if VIX stabilizes 22, that means tomorrow, let's see on a daily chart, that means tomorrow our baseline here is at 22. That means we might actually see a further VIX spike tomorrow to $26, which we actually don't really wanna see because when VIX spikes, that literally means most likely NASDAQ goes down. And then when NASDAQ goes down, the market goes down. And then when the market goes down to the next support line, we actually will see a bear market starting. So how do you make money in this situation? Um, you can bet on certain outperforming individual stocks that are more volatile, like AMC. Or you know, if you still have faith in the vaccines, then Novavax was really good, right? It's It's just, very confusing right now guys and for those of you who like apple apple is in a super confusing spot right now because if you look at the general rsi it barely you see it barely drops under 30 and it's it's trending towards 30. And if you look at all of the derivative of the rate of change of, of how rsi changes so if we shorten what rsi means right if you just take out the the the, the RSI equation. RSI literally just means I will compare the past few days and weeks return and then to see the average return. If the if, if the RSI is lower than 30, that means the, R, the average return is diminishing. And then most likely because we're assuming that each individual stock has its own personality and it's more resilient than we saw. And then if Apple used to be resilient in the past, it will be resilient in the future. So what will happen? It's gonna rebound, right? So if you look at RSI, that means when Apple eventually drops under 30, which it barely does. If it actually drops 30, it's probably a good rebound point. I mean, it does. I mean, it, it proves once again, every time Apple drops under 30, it's a really good buying point. Um, so yeah, we can observe this and we probably can switch a lot of our portfolio to just buying a bunch of interesting blue chip stocks uh, and start batting them on a, say, a you know, a, a stagflation market or a heavy inflation market, I mean, it still would go up because people have to park their money somewhere, right? If we have a huge inflation spike, that means, you know, money is, is basically depreciating at a rate that's super high. You either need to spend it right away or you have to put it somewhere that will make more than the inflation, where Apple, Microsoft, Fang, blue chip stock, unless the entire market is go down in a drastic rate, like it goes down by like, you know, 2% or 5% per day, then it will, then it will be really funny that we will see MMAT acting on, you know, on the market on SPY. Then what's going to happen is we probably, it will probably will be really a great idea to short and then short it to the tits all the way until SPY reaches a no return point and people will realize, okay, we, we went too far. Uh, where, where is re no return point? I don't think that will happen. Okay, I don't think it will actually go down to no return point. The no return point is here, 363. That's a no return point. Or more like, it will be like a return return point. Um, for those of you who are curious what happens during 2020, it's right here. So 2020, the maximum drop is, let's see, 100 point out of SPY 
I probably can do it in my head, but 20 the 30% drop. Are we gonna see a 30% drop? I don't think it's that bad, but let's see. Uh, sorry, it's 371, I think that's the time, isn't it? Oh, now it's making me nervous. So, our maximum downside is defined at... Whoa, this is 317? This is, this is some, this is some, it's right here, 317, right here. Oh, this is some trippy stuff. So, the closest support line is 324. <clears throat> oh my god, this is some trippy stuff. This is some trippy stuff, guys. This is trippy. This is the maximum downside right here. Oh, this is trippy. This is very trippy right here. Very, very trippy. This is very trippy, guys. So, the maximum downside... Let's just say it's 319 because it's the closest to where we um where our uh, more, uh numeric you know calculations that so this is your maximum downside. Wow, this is some this is some trippy stuff. Very uncertain. Wow, this this is some really trippy stuff. But I doubt it. I think COVID is a shocker, and I think it's an outlier black swan event. So I think the worst it will get is 400. And if it goes to 400, let's see how much money we have left and uh, start betting up is probably the better solution here. But right now, it's just way too uncertain. If the Congress resolve its own shit, then I think we'll see a further um, pull up to like 480. I think NASDAQ does have another run. SPY does have another run. Um, but it really depending on how dad and mom is doing. If, uh, if they have, if they, if they stop having competing policies, then I think the market, the GDP growth will be better. But when a Congress is trying to increase tax, when a Congress is trying to increase tax and then trying to basically overspend and trying to do a lot of things, it will basically increase the inflation rate and it will make inflation, if previously say, saying is transitory is true, um, if all of the bills are passed, then it means it's no longer going to be transitory. We're actually looking at a 5.5% inflation on the year end. That means on 2022, um, the inflation is not really going to drop that much. It's probably going to stabilize at, at around 5.2 to 4.8. And then that's going to create a huge problem. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. And uh, hey, uh, I'm still positive. So hopefully see you guys on the upside tomorrow. If uh, most likely tomorrow, probably gonna be a, a small rebound there. And it's really great for day trading right now. I think in general right now, if you guys have money, um, day trading is the, the best option. Swing trading might actually not be that great unless you, you hop on like the last 15 minutes and then find um, one stock or one thing that have the highest liquidity. Or you can just bet on like a huge movement on SPY either upwards or downwards. But then that also requires you or us to have a very clear understanding of uh, where the market is going directionally speaking, uh, which is really hard right now. Even for me, I think the greater uncertainty makes it really foggy. For me, I do think SPY will actually rebound on um, at least in the next two weeks, especially when the Congress will, I think by, by like, by October 18th, which is like the, the, the two Mondays ahead, Congress is supposed to um, get a handle of what they're doing. If not, then um, it's going to be the longest uncertainty period of time we've ever seen in history, actually. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. All right, I'm going to post this real quick. I think I'm going to number two make the sum now, and we're going to post this. I don't know how to title this. Um, I think this is just like basically the, the market outlook. See you guys on the, on the upside, and... You know, hopefully um, the market is going to be better. If not, then um, maybe it's time to short. But I think SPY is going to flatten. It's going to trade flat instead of actually have a big movement. Bye. See you guys on the upside.